topic is field area primitives. So uh, this topic is basically how to fill a polygon. Now what is a polygon? For understanding the polygon, first we should understand what is a vertex. Vertex is a point in space either in two, two dimensional space or in three dimensional space. And a polygon is a ordered list of those vertices. Now each vertex is connected with the next in the list and last is connected with the first. So it should be a closed uh, 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 figure. Now it may, may be more than uh, one polygon uh, with the holes or may contain self intersections. A surface which is closed one and bounded by a straight line segments is known as the polygon. So the line segments are called the edges or sides of the polygon and the point of intersection of two edges uh, is called the vertex of the polygon. As you can see here, I have given a figure. This is a polygon. It has four vertices and four edges. So it is a close one and uh, that's why it is called a polygon. Now next is, what are the different types of polygons that are available? First one is regular polygon. Now what are regular polygons? The polygons having equal length of all edges with internal or external angle between any two connected edges are same. They are known as regular polygons. So the property of regular polygon says that the length of all the edges should be equal. Now next one is irregular polygons. Uh, irregular polygons are polygons that are having different length of edges and the angles between any two connected edges are same. So it is uh, just the opposite, uh, not uh, exactly the opposite but somewhere uh, opposite to the regular polygon. Now next one is convex polygon. Now what, are, what is convex polygon? Uh, uh, if we take two points inside the polygon and join these points by a straight line, if all the points on the line lies inside the polygon, then it is called the convex polygon. So, and the fourth category is concave polygon. Now the uh, polygon that is not uh, uh, convex that is known as a concave polygon. So first we will discuss how to uh, uh, fill those polygons. Uh, so uh, for that we will discuss scanline polygon fill algorithm. But before coming to the steps of uh, scanline polygon fill algorithm, we have to understand few uh, things and a few special cases that uh, may occur when we are uh, filling the polygon. So for each scan line crossing a polygon, the area fill algorithm locates the intersection points of the scan line with the polygon edges. Now th this scan line polygon fill algorithm is basically based on uh, we are scanning the polygon line by line. At every scan line we are uh, finding out which points are inside the polygon and which are outside the polygon. So those uh, the points that are inside the polygon that are to be colored. Uh, filled, otherwise we have to left uh, the points that are outside the polygon. Now these intersection points are then sorted from left to right and the corresponding frame buffer positions between each intersection pair are set to the specified fill color. Uh, as you can see here in this particular diagram we have considered uh, one scan line, this, this one and it is uh, intersecting the polygon at uh, x is equal to 10 and again it is intersecting at x is equal to 14 uh, the area from uh, x is equal to 18 to x is equal to 24 that is inside the uh, polygon now we have to color only those pixels that lie between 10 and 40 and 18 and 24 so these are the interior pixels these are the interior pixels uh, along the scan line passing through a polygon area so this is the way how we can uh, find out at each scan line that uh, which points are inside the polygon and which are which pixels are outside the polygon. Now the calculations performed in scan uh, conversion and other graphics algorithms typically take advantage of various coherence properties of a scene that is to be displayed. Now what is coherence? It is simply the, uh, the properties of one part of a scene that are, that are related in some way to other parts of the scene so that the relationship can be used to reduce processing. So that, that is the coherence property. For example, in case of uh, uh, scan converting a circle, we, uh, we have found out only one point because a circle has, uh, is having a 8-way symmetry. So 
so we have found out only one point and rest of the points are uh, uh, rest, rest of the pixels uh, we have uh, uh, scan converted with the help of that uh, pixel coordinates so same is the coherence property now coherence methods often involve incremental calculations applied along a single scan line or between successive scan lines now uh, there are two types of uh, uh, coherence one is spatial coherence another one is scan line coherence now what is spatial coherence the adjacent pixels are likely to have the same characteristics uh, then this property is known as spatial coherence so if uh, 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 two pixels are there and they have the same properties that is called the spatial uh, coherence scan line coherence is adjacent pixels on a scan line are likely to have the same characteristics uh, and this this is called the scan line coherence so there is a difference between the spatial coherence and scan line co coherence in case of spatial coherence we are considering the adjacent pixels they can be suppose uh, this is the pixel and this one is the adjacent pixel this one is the adjacent pixel and this one is the so these are the adjacent pixels so they can have the similar uh, properties that is called the spatial coherence and in scan line coherence suppose this is a scan line and all the pixels or on the same scan line can have the similar properties that is called the scan line coherence now uh, the point to be noted is that these two properties are useful in scan converting a polygon now some scan line intersection and polygon vertices require special handling so some special cases are there that we have to handle separately for example a scan line passing through a vertex intersects two polygon edges at that position now we will uh, discuss the special case as you can see here we have this polygon with nine vertices v1 v2 v3 v4 5 6 7 8 and 9 now uh, suppose uh, uh, we are considering this scan line as y now it is intersecting this polygon at this position this position this position and this position now the next scan line that we are taking is y dash now it is in a uh, intersecting this polygon at this v7 at this position now in this particular case as you can see here uh, the area from this point till this point is inside the polygon but the area from this point to this point is outside the polygon so we do not want to fill this uh, this uh, 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 this set of pixels now again it is from this point to this point that is inside the polygon now in the second case as we can see here in in case of scan line y dash uh, we have uh, three intersection points uh, from this point to vertex v7 has come vertex v7 to next so vertex v7 is common in both the intersections now how to handle this problem now in this particular case uh, we can uh, uh, see here that vertex v7 is Uh, common for the two intersection points, right? So uh, we have to find out whether the line that is uh, that are ending or that are starting from this vertex V7 are on the similar side or on the uh, opposite sides. So as you can see here, the edge V8 to V7 and V6 to V7, they are ending at V7 and both are uh, in the upward direction of this vertex. So they are on the same side. so we will consider this point and we will have this intersection uh, section we will fill this intersection uh, uh, intersection point from this place to this place and this place to this place now again we consider scan line y in case of scan line y we have this intersection till the v5 right now v5 to this point this, that is outside the so how we will find out that this uh, the, uh, this, this intersection is this edge is inside the polygon Uh, outside the polygons now you can see here in case of v5 the, the one edge uh, that is from v6 v5 that is ending at v5 and another edge that is v5 v4 that is starting from the uh, vertex v5 so both the edges are on the opposite sides so what we can do when both the edges are, are in different uh, opposite direction in that case we uh, we uh, we will not consider this intersection as uh, 
from V5 to this point. And again, we can see here that the intersection point is, uh, the, we will consider all the pixels on this particular edge. So this is the special case where we have to find out whether we have to consider that uh, intersection uh, edge or not. So now, uh, in determining the edge intersection, we can set up an incremental coordinate calculation along any side edge by exploiting the fact that the slope of the edge is constant from one scan line to next. As you can see here, this is scan line yk and this is the intersection point that is xk yk and this is uh, scan line yk plus 1 times the next scan line and it is having these coordinates xk plus 1 and yk plus 1. So the slope is same. The slope of the edge is constant from one scan line to the next. So if we consider m as the slope of the edge, then yk plus 1 minus yk is 1 and xk plus 1 is equal to xk plus 1 upon m. So each successive x is computed by adding the inverse of the slope and rounding to the nearest integer as we can see here in this equation. Now we can recall the Corresponding to 
the uh, y lower vertex. So we have to find out the uh, minimum value of y for that uh, particular uh, scan line. So shorter than is if necessary to resolve the vertex intersection problem. Now the, uh, step 3 is for each edge entry so we have to show the following things. First one is we have to show the upper value of y that is the largest y value on that edge. Then we have to show the x uh, lower value of x that is the x intercept at that scan line. And we have to show 1 upon m that is the for incrementing x that is the slope inverse of slope. And step number 4 says that for each scan line the edges are sorted from left to right. So we have to uh, sort the edges on the basis of x coordinate. Now next is how to uh, make an active edge table. We have to construct the active edge list during scan conversion. Active edge list is a linked list of active edges on the current scan line y. The active edges are kept sorted by x. So the active edge list contains all the edges crossed by that scan line as we have already seen the, in the last examples. As we move up, update the active edge list using the sorted edge table if necessary. So these are the steps that are required to make an active edge list uh, table. Now we can see here the scan line polygon fill algorithm steps. Now the first step is we have to set y to the smallest y coordinate that has an entry in the sorted edge table. Uh, that is the y for the first non-empty bucket. Second step is we have to initialize the active edge list to be empty. Third step uh, has a number of sub-steps. For each scan line y uh, we have to repeat these steps. Right? So first step, a sub-step is copy from uh, sorted edge table bucket y to active edge list those edges whose minimum value of y is equal to y that is the entry edge. Second, uh, B step is the sort, uh, the uh, active edge list uh, on X is easier because sorted edge list is pre-sorted. So we have already created a sorted edge table, so uh, sorting of active edge list is required. Now step C says we have to fill in the desired pixel values on scan line Y by using pairs of X coordinates from active edge list. Step D is we have to remove from the active edge list those entries for which y is equal to maximum value of y. That is the edges not involved in next scan line. Uh, step E says we have to increment y by 1 to the coordinates of the next scan line as we have to move to the next scan line. Then uh, F, uh, step F says for each non vertical edge remaining in active edge list update x for the new y. So uh, these are the uh, steps for scan line polygon fill algorithm. Now we will see uh, another uh, polygon fill algorithm that is the boundary fill algorithm. Now boundary fill algorithm works on the basis of suppose we have one area. Now it says the boundary fill algorithm says so, uh, for in this particular case the boundary color is black and uh, in the, the color inside the polygon is white. So boundary fill algorithm says that we have to consider one point inside the uh, polygon and we have to find out the uh, pixels uh, adjacent to this uh, uh, particular point and find, we have to find out the uh, color of the pixel. So if the color of the pixel is not equal to the color of the boundary then we have to fill that uh, uh, pixel color with uh, suppose we want to fill this polygon with, uh, with the red color. So if the uh, color of the uh, pixel is not equal to the boundary color then we have to uh, make that pixel red. So this is a way of uh, uh, filling the uh, polygon with the help of boundary fill algorithm that is written here. We have to start with the point inside the region and paint the interior outward towards the boundary. If the boundary is specified in a single color, the fill algorithm proceeds outward pixel by pixel until the boundary color is encountered. So it is useful in interactive painting packages where interior points are easily selected. Now the inputs required for this algorithm are the coordinates of the interior point that is the x, y coordinates and the fill color, the fill color that we want to fill inside the polygon and the boundary color that is the uh, uh, in this particular example the boundary color is black. So these are three inputs that are required. So 
how to start the algorithm? We have to start from x y coordinate that is the interior point of pixel. The algorithm tests neighboring pixels to determine whether they are of the boundary color. If not, they are painted with the fill color and their neighbors are tested. This process continues until all pixels up to the boundary have been tested. Now there are two methods for proceeding to the neighboring pixels from the current test position. So as we have started with the uh, point inside the uh, polygon, so we have to find out the neighboring pixels. Now there are two approaches to find out the neighboring pixels. Uh, first approach is four connected uh, approach and second one is eight connected approach. Now the four connected approach says, suppose this is the pixel that we have started with and in case of four connected pixels we will find out the uh, four pixels. One, two, three, four that are adjacent to the current pixel. Now in case of eight connected uh, method, this is the current pixel and we have to find out the eight connected pixels that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So this is the eight connected approach. Now we, uh, we will find out whether the color of the adjacent pixels is equal to the boundary color. If not, then we have to fill the adjacent pixels with the fill color uh, uh, of the that, that has been given as input. So we can use either the four connected approach or the eight connected approach. It is up to us. Now this is the uh, procedure that we have written in terms of a method uh, that is the boundary fill 4 uh, method because in this particular case we have taken 4 connected approach uh, so that's why the name has been given 4 now uh, 3 inputs are required one uh, is the xy coordinates for the interior pixel uh, another uh, input is the fill color that we want to fill inside the polygon and the third mix, uh, uh, input is the border color that means the boundary color of this polygon, existing polygon. So, we have take, uh, taken one uh, variable of integer type that is the interior color that we want to uh, uh, fill inside the polygon. Now we have to get, uh, we have to use the get pixel method in this that will find out the xy coordinate and interior color we have set. Now we are checking uh, two conditions. If both the conditions are true then we have to uh, find out the adjusted pixels otherwise uh, this will be complete. Now you can see here interior color is not equal to water color and interior color is not equal to fill color. Then we have to uh, find out the adjacent pixels of this uh, interior pixel and we have to set, set pixel x, y. Now it is a recursive procedure because we are finding the adjacent pixels by using the four connected approach. So that's why it is called, this function is calling itself. Now as you can see here, uh, I will take a diagram uh, for four connected approach. So this is the current pixel. Now, in case of first, when we are calling x plus 1, y, that means we are considering this pixel and we are uh, sending the fill color and the border color. In next recursive call, we are uh, uh, passing x minus 1 and y, that means th uh, this one. And in the next one, we are passing x, y plus 1. So x, y plus 1 means this one. And in the next one, we are passing the coordinates x, y minus 1, that means this this is the adjacent pixel. So, so this these are the recursive procedure and we are, now again when uh, we are calling this method it will find out the adjacent pixels of this one and in this case it will find out this, these. So this, uh, this is a recursive procedure that we can use. This is the way of filling the polygon with the help of a boundary fill algorithm. Now there is another special case uh, uh, in filling the uh, algorithm. In the last case the boundary color was same on all the sides. So we have taken black. But if the case arises that the boundary color, we want to fill this one, right? So this white color. Uh, now the boundary color of this, uh, uh, this particular polygon is different. Now at this side it is red, it is, at this side it is blue, at this side it is black. So uh, boundary fill algorithm will not work because boundary fill algorithm says the boundary color should be same on all the sides. So for uh, dealing with this, such kind of uh, uh, polygon filling, we use the flood fill algorithm. Now flood fill algorithm says uh, we have to start with 
with the uh, from a specified integral point say and uh, xy call the seed point then using a four connected approach or the eight connected approach the entire area can be filled by a specified color if uh, they have a color which is that of the boundary then do not consider the pixel if the color is different then the color uh, the pixel with the desired color the process will be recursive one and stop when there is no neighboring pixel which can be colored so uh, as you can see here we have to start with the point here and we uh, by using four connected or eight connected approach we will find out the adjacent pixel we will find out whether the color of the adjacent pixel is same uh, the as that of the current uh, pixel if that is same then we have to uh, fill those uh, pixels otherwise it is not equal to the uh, uh, color of the current pixel then we have to leave those pixels so as you can see here this is the procedure for uh, flood fill algorithm so uh, in this particular case we have again used the used the uh, four connected approach so uh, the inputs that are required for this is the x y coordinates of the interior point that is the seed point and the fill color and the interior color now there is a variable color now we have to find out the we have to take a interior point that is the x y and color we are checking whether the color is equal to interior color if the color is equal to interior color then in that case we have to find out the adjacent pixels and we have to fill those pixels with the current color so set pixel x y and this is again the uh, recursive procedure and x plus 1 and y that is the next pixel Uh, that is the previous pixel and that is the uh, downward pixel and that is the upward pixel so this is the procedure for flood fill algorithm now next topic is attributes of output primitives as we already discussed the line circle ellipse these are the output primitives now every prim output primitive has its attribute attributes means the properties that we will discuss so Uh, the attributes, uh, the definition for the attribute is the parameters that affects the way a primitive will be displayed. So those are known as the uh, attributes of that primitive. So uh, we can consider only those attributes that control the basic display properties of the primitive. For example, the line can be a uh, dotted line, it can be a dashed line, it can be a solid line, and it can be thin. So I think. Uh, and it can be of any color, right? So these are the few properties of a line. So first we will discuss the line attributes. Now the basic attributes of a line are the type, its width, and color. So as you can see here, the type attribute, the line can be a solid type. This is the example. Now uh, it can be a dotted type, uh, where the very short dash with spacing equal to or greater than the dash itself. That is a dotted line. Then we have a dashed line that is displayed by generating a interdash spacing, as you can see here. So uh, these are the type attributes. Now next attribute of the line is width. Now it specifies in pixels and proportion of a standard line width. Thicker the line can be produced by adding extra pixels vertically when um, mod of m is less than one. And adding extra pixel horizontally when mod of m is greater than one. So, uh, one, as we can see here, suppose this is the line, so we can increase the thickness by adding the vertical uh, pixels and by adding the horizontal pixels. So the thickness will, would be increased. So, but there are uh, issues when we are increasing the thickness of the line. So a line have different thickness on the slope. So the problem uh, arises when we want to join uh, the two lines with different thicknesses. So there should there will be a gap between those, and th that joining will be not be smooth. So as you can see here, uh, to solve that problem uh, that is due to different shapes at the end of the line, uh, that can be uh, solved by uh, adding line end caps. So there are different end caps that we will discuss. First one is a butt cap, second one is round cap, third one is projecting square cap. So we will discuss one by one. So butt cap is uh, it is obtained by adjusting the end position of the line so that the thick line is displayed with square ends. As you can see here, thick line is displayed. 
said with the square ends at both the sides perpendicular to the line mark. If specified line has slope m, the square end of the thick line has slope minus one upon m. So this is your butt cap. Second type of cap that we can use is round cap. Now as you can see here, the line is ending here, but a round cap has been introduced at the both the ends. Uh, now the this is actually a semicircle. Semicircle with the radius of uh, that is the half of the uh, thickness and uh, di diameter uh, we have that is equal to the total line thickness. So that is your round cap. Now next type of cap is projecting square cap. Now in this type we simply extend the line and add. We have extended the line and add the uh, butt caps that are positioned uh, one half of the line uh, width beyond the specified end point. So uh, you can see here. In case of butt cap, the line was ending here. But in case of projecting square cap, we have extended this line and we are ending at this position. So that is the difference between a butt cap and a projecting square cap. Now, uh, the width attribute uh, again, uh, when we are using the caps, there is a small issue. A smoothly connected series of line segments cannot be produced as thick lines using horizontal and vertical pixel span, uh, spans leave pixel gaps at the boundaries. So between the lines of the different slopes, where there is a shift from horizontal span to the vertical span. So there are some methods for smoothly joining two lines of segments. So that we will discuss. So first type of joint that we can use is the meter joint. So it is accomplished by extending the outer boundaries of each of the two lines until they meet. As you can see here, in this particular case we have the butt caps and we have extended uh, the outer boundaries of each of the two lines until they are meeting. So we are getting this meter joint that is called the meter joint. Now next type of joint that we can use is round joint. Uh, so it is produced by capping the connection between the two segments with a circular boundary whose diameter is equal to the line width. As you can see here, uh, when we are joining these two lines, we have used the round joint. So uh, the diameter of this round joint is equal to the line width. So that is your round joint. The third type of joint that we can use is bevel joint. It is generated by displaying the line segments with butt caps swelling in triangular gaps where the segments meet. Now, uh, in case of uh, uh, the first joint, middle joint, we were extending this to the end points until they are meeting. Now, in case of bevel joint, we have finished the journey at like this. Now, the next attribute of the line is color attributes. So, color are, colors are which are positive integers. Now color information is um, stored in the frame buffer or in separate table and use pixel values as index to the color table. Number of color choices depends on the number of bits available per pixel in the frame buffer. So there are two ways to store color information. One is direct method, another one is indirect method. So we will discuss one by one. Now in case of direct method, as you can see here, uh, for a 24 bit color, now uh, all the colors are made up of uh, three colors that is red, green and blue that is the combination of RGB. So if we have 24 bit uh, color combination so uh, 8 bits for e, uh, red, 8 bits for green and 8 bits for blue. For example if we have 20, uh, 255, 0, 0 that means uh, it is equal to red right because uh, the uh, contribution of green and blue is 0. Now for a 15 bit color system, uh, we have 5 bits each for red, green and blue. So the video hardware uses the values for uh, to drive the RGB gun. So you can mix different levels of RGB to get any color you want. So uh, this is the indirect method of showing the color uh, uh, attribute. A single number uh, stored at each pixel. So it is used as an index into one array of RGB uh, uh, triples. Uh, with 8 bits per pixel you can get 256 colors of your choice. Simple things to fill up color maps with a grey uh, ramp or a bunch of random colors. A very poor uh, representation of full colors. So uh, 
this uh, this was all about your uh, uh, color attribute now we will discuss the next uh, uh, output primitive that is the character attribute so the appearance of displayed character is controlled by attributes such as font its size color and orientation so character is affected by the type of font that we are using the size its color and the orientation now the attributes can be set both for the entire character string or for the individual characters defined as marker symbols so first one is text attributes so first of all there is a choice of font so you can use any type of font whether that is times new roman that is uh, uh, korean that is arial or any type uh, any font that is available now the characters in a selected font can also be displayed with assorted underlining styles like uh, it can be so bold it can be dotted or it can be solid double and in bold phase or in italic phase and in outline or shadow styles now the text attributes a particular font and associated style is selected in a fix program by setting an integer code for the text font parameter uh, in the tf in the function now the color settings for display text are stored uh, in the system attribute list and used by the procedure that load correct definitions into the frame buffer so when a character string is to be displayed the current color uh, is used to set pixel values in the frame buffer corresponding to the character now the point measurement specifies the size of the body of the character but uh, different fonts with the same points Uh, specification can have different uh, character size depending on the design of the typeface as you can see here this is the character body uh, this is the capital letter and these are the small letters that we are using now every alphabet has its base so this is the base and this is the uh, total height of the character this is called the cap cap is nothing but from where exactly the uh, alphabet is starting and the top top is the topmost line of the alphabet uh, and this is the character body this this total is the character body as you can see here and uh, in case of small letters uh, when we uh, use like this in uh, this particular case f is there so when we are uh, rounding this f at this position that is called the curve so in case of j the curve is here so uh, these are the specifications of a character now the distance between the bottom line and top of the line uh, top line of the character body is same for all the characters in in a particular size and uh, type face but the body uh, width may vary so uh, the body width depends on the uh, suppose we are writing the capital letters then the body width is uh, higher as compared to the small letters so character height is defined as the distance between the base line and the cap line of the characters now the next attribute is orientation orientation of our displayed character string is set according to the direction of the character a vector in which x and y components are specified so text is then displayed so that the orientation of characters from base line to cap line is in the direction of the up vector as we can see here the direction of the up vector is 45 degree as you can see here there uh, the text would be displayed as slanted text now a combination of text path and a vector can be used to display the slanting text as a vector controls the direction of the text path as you can see here this is the direction of the up vector and the, that is the text path direction that is up down left and right now the text path can be set in right left up or down so you can see here this is the text path uh, that is the up uh, up down left and right now the next attribute is text alignment now this attribute specifies how text is to be positioned with respect to the start coordinates horizontal alignment is set by assigning value left center or right and the vertical alignment is set by assigning the value top cap half base or bottom as you can see in this particular example uh, in case of horizontal alignment it is Uh, left center and right and in case of vertical assignment it is top cap half base and bottom same is the case for this when we are writing a, a vertical string this is the top cap this is the half and this is the base and this is the bottom 
and this is the less uh, that is the uh, horizontal uh, alignment left center and right now now next is area fill attributes so how to fill the area the options for filling a defined region include a choice between a solid color or a pattern color fill and choices for the particular colors and patterns so these are the uh, different choices that we will get so these fill options can be applied to polygon regions or to the areas defined by the curved boundaries uh, depending on the capabilities of the available packages in addition areas can be painted using various brush styles colors and transparency parameters so uh, we can see here there are different fill styles uh, areas that are displayed with three basic fill styles one first one is hollow with a color so that is the hollow uh, type style filled with a solid color this is a uh, different style and the third one is filled with a specified pattern or design as you can see here there is a pattern that has been shown so these are the uh, area fill attributes now the fill styles a polygon hol hollow fill is generated with the drawing routines as a closed polyline another value for fill style is hash uh, which is used to fill an area with selected hashing patterns uh, parallel lines or cross lines as you can see this is a diagonal hash fill and this is a diagonal cross hash fill so these are the different polygon fill using hash patterns now the ho hollow Only the boundary outline with the interior color the same as the bound, uh, background color. Now the solid fill of a region can be accomplished with the scan line procedures. Other fill options include specification for edge type, edge width, uh, edge color of a region. These attributes are set by independently of the fill style or fill color, and they provide for the same options as the line attribute parameters. Now the process of filling an area with a rectangular pattern is called uh, tiling, and rectangular fill patterns are referred to as tiling patterns. As you can see here, uh, this is a tiling pattern. This is uh, this is the polygon that we want to start, and this is the uh, uh, start position. This one, and this is a tiling an area from a des uh, designated start position. That th that is this one. Known overlapping and adjacent patterns are laid out. to cover all scan lines passing through the defined area now pattern fill uh, what is pattern fill to is superimpose a selected uh, pattern on scan lines the scan line procedure has are to be modified now beginning from a specified start position for uh, pattern fill the rectangular patterns uh, should be mapped vertically to scan lines between the top and bottom of fill area and horizontally to the interior pixel position across these lines so as you can see here this is the pattern uh, array superimposed on parallelogram fill area to produce the display b so uh, as uh, in daily life we see when we are uh, using uh, tiles on the floor we are making a pattern right so every tile has its own uh, uh, pattern but we have to uh, lay them uh, on the floor with a specific pattern so when we want this pattern we will uh, superimpose the, uh, this uh, different tiles in this particular pattern that we will able to have this pattern that we want so this is the example of pattern fill now this is another example when uh, we are combining a fill pattern with a background pattern using uh, boolean operations and or nor exclusive or and using simple replacement pattern so this is the pattern and this is the background and this is the and or nor and this is replace now uh, we we have uh, we also have soft fill now modified boundary fill and flood fill procedures that are applied to repaint areas so that the fill color is combined with the background colors are referred to as soft fill so what you use for these fill methods is to soften the uh, fill colors at object uh, borders that have been blurred to anti aliase the edges now another is, uh, is to allow repainting of color area that was originally filled with a semi transparent brush where the current color is then uh, a mixture of the brush color and the 
background color behind the area. In either case, we want the new fill color to have the same variations over the area as the current fill color. So that, that was all about uh, your filled area primitives 